Welcome to the course. Welcome to the course. I'm Nick Lever and I've been working with Real Time 3D for over 20 years. In this course you're going to learn to create Unity shaders. Unity uses the CG shading language. CG is a programming language of its own and it's similar to the C programming language. My aim is even if you've never touched a shader before you'll be able to follow along with the course because we're going to look at the language from its basics. I think you'll find it's going to be fun. Here are a few of the shaders that you'll create in this course. All you need to work along with the course is a copy of Unity, freely available from the Unity website. The course is split into sections. Section 1 introduces some basic concepts. Section 2 you start to write your first shaders. In section 3 we look at shaping functions and in section 4 we start to look at the amazing flexibility of adding noise functions to your shader code. In section 5 we look at showing images or textures in your shader and how you can play around with these at lightning speeds. Each Unity shader has two components. The fragment shader which is all about deciding the colour of a pixel and a vertex shader which is all about moving a vertex from object space to clip space. In sections 1 to 5 we use a simple quad and just concern ourselves with the fragment shader. Section 6 introduces vertex shaders for the first time, bringing you into the 3D world. If you want to work in 3D then you will probably want to add lighting to your shaders. Unity makes this as easy as possible using the surface shader option. And this is what we look at in section 7. In section 8 we look at advanced effects such as using the CG programming language to subdivide a low polygon mesh at runtime and using Unity's stencil buffer to perform some amazing rendering tricks. In section 9 we look at the tricky subject of transparency in shaders. Usually a shader only considers the surface of a mesh but volumetric shaders render the interior of a mesh, allowing you to create cloud effects. We look at this cutting edge technique in section 10. Unity has several shaders that you can apply after the initial screen is rendered. We call this post-processing and section 11 introduces you to amazing possibilities of using this technology. Finally, in section 12, we'll review all the amazing things you've learned. Whatever you're building with Unity, learning to create your own custom shaders is so worth learning and the methods of shader development apply even if you work in another shading language like GLSL as used by OpenGL and WebGL. This video comes from my Unity shader course. Get the full course for a great discount by following this link. See the description for a link to the resources.